Well, man has been napping for thousands and thousands of years. And I assure you that with practice, availability of the raw material, anyone can make reasonable tools out of flint. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, I urge you to go and do it. Have a go. You'll enjoy every second. Well, here we're going to try and take one or two little flakes off this corner. And the first thing I do is just strengthen, strengthen the edge by rubbing it opposite to the way that I'm going to flake it. And you can strengthen it like that and then try and take a little flake off there. That's one piece gone. That's cleaned it up a little bit. We strengthen the edge again. And where that flake's gone through there, we follow that ridge down it again. Take another flake off. And we're getting to the stage where we've made a little platform now to take some nice flakes off. small because we haven't got a long run on this. There's another one gone. There's another one gone. Now we're getting better flakes now as we get a better core. And these have been found in the archaeological record. You can see the lines coming down here where the flakes have come off and you've found that on the ground or at a dig and you can tell that it's been man-made by these flake ridges coming off. We'll just strengthen this up again and some of these little flints coming off now get really really sharp and they could, that could be used a little knife straight away or docked a little bit and made into some sort of tool. But these little ones, particularly in the Mesolithic, could be made to make compound arrowheads with four or five little blades glued down the, sh down the shaft. And these ones become very, very sharp indeed. Here we're trying to make a finish off a little discoidal knife. This was used in your hand and just used for skinning rabbits or squirrels, nothing too big, but it's very, very sharp. There's just one or two little areas just to finish off. And that was held with your finger supporting it, and this little platform here was taken off with a little light hammer. And gradually worked down. This grey piece here is not quite as good as the black so we'll leave it on and turn him round to there and then just gradually just sharpen him up all the way through there's not a lot more you can do to that apart from reduce it in size but not in sharpness so that found in the archaeological context would be your discoidal knife and just using it to nick your way round. Very much like a hand axe but a lot smaller. Well this is pressure flaking. This is where you want more accuracy for finer work and you're putting the copper tip up onto a platform and you're pushing as hard as you can down getting your shoulders into it and a little nip off at the end. And we're taking these little flakes off and that just sort of tidies up the edge here and makes it a little sharper. You become much more accurate with this method. Much more precise. And you can make that edge very sharp. And that's the end of that little discoidal knife really. Just tidying it up with a pressure flake. Here. Whatever napping you're doing, it's essential that you have some eye protection. You know, flint is like glass and it flies up and down. Make sure you have eye protection. And for those with more delicate hands, perhaps a glove on the left hand.